Hello and welcome back to the review for the first discussion show of 2017 and one of many hopefully to come. Today we're going to be discussing the performance against Tottenham Hotspur as well as some other little bits and pieces. For that I'm going to be joined by Dan Bardell as usual and two other particularly familiar faces in Max Roberts and John Inslee. So first of all Max, let's talk about uh, today's game against Spurs. What did you make of it? Um, for 60 minutes I think we were good value for a replay. I, I thought to be fair there was a lot of fight on the pitch today. Um, I'll go into Danny Murphy in a minute, but one of the comments he said is, is Villa didn't really try and push. He, just, he was shocked we didn't try and lie down. But I did think we, we, we did show a lot of critics what we, what we can do. I mean, we closed them out for a good amount of time. They did struggle to shoot. That's a kind of go to shots outside the area. I mean, we saw Dyer's shot and it just went straight to Rosette, literally. Um, but you could tell he missed Codge. We could tell you can miss a big, strong outlet up front. Um, Gabby, he, he just didn't have a chance against... Um, Alderweireld and Vimmer, he was just getting bullied off it. Um, Midfield-wise, I thought we lo- looked really, really steady in midfield with um, Tish Boulder and Yedinak. Um And defensively, I thought, thought we were OK. Um, and Marvis' performance wasn't the best today by any stretch. But I thought our two centre-backs worked, worked really well. So it, I thought it was a good team performance. I think we were really unlucky to lose by two. I think one, one would have been a fair result. I think we were all expecting a, a loss, really. But, um, yeah, think about it. It is a shame. It's kind of what could have been instead of what did happen. OK, so, John, the, the main talking point is the fact that on the BBC they were saying that basically Spurs were playing a second-string side and Villa should have come out a bit more. To me, it was not a mean feat to only lose by two goals because, to me, that Spurs side, most of those players were getting any Premier League side still. Yeah, I mean, BBC weren't doing us any favours at all all game. And I thought we held them off pretty well. I thought they didn't really chop and change that much. And I thought we... Like Max would say, I thought we held them off well. I thought we 1-0 would have been a fair result. I think 2-0 was, was harsh on our players. I thought we battled well against them. And I thought some of their quality didn't show at all. Some of their decent new players that they had or younger players they had didn't show at all because we sort of kept them off the ball and played pretty well. Dan, I've kept you quiet so far, but let's talk about Sam Johnston. Obviously, everyone knows that I was very, very pro this signing the whole the whole week. So it's, it's good that he's uh, proved me right <laughs> and, and performed very well in his first game. In fairness, he didn't have loads to do, but the stuff that, that he did have to do, I mean, he had no chance with either goal. The stuff he did have to deal with, he, he dealt with it well. He made a, made a really good save in the second half, tip, tipping it over the bar, and he came and got a few things. I was a bit worried that first cross that came in that he punched when there was no one around him. But after, after that, he, he, res, he responded well. He, was, he, look, he looked good, to be honest. But the problem is, if he, if he plays too many games like that, like I said before, he won't be at Aston Villa next season. How, what did you make the whole goalkeeping situation? Do you think Johnston's proved himself now to be number one on that showing? When, when he was announced on Twitter, I, I wasn't too bothered about it because I do feel it was really harsh on Galini. Because apart from like the early mistakes in the season, which on the most weren't his fault, um, one against Huddersfield was was Elphick, and just a few other defensive mistakes which would have let Galini down. Um, I wasn't too excited by it. I didn't see the need. Um, of of Johnson coming in, but today he he was really good. He was really good. I mean, the two goals he was let down by his defence. Um, I think it was either Yednak or Hunt lost his man for the Davis header, and the second goal the defence just just fell apart really. And there's nothing you can do in, in those two goals as a goalkeeper. I thought his distribution was really good from his kicking. Um, I thought the the save he made, I can't remember who who from, but he, he held it. Yeah, from Son and he held it. And I mean, any other keeper would would, would have would have parried that, but he, and he. He made a really good save out of it. So I, I, I was really impressed by him. I mean, how old are you? Like 22, 23? He looks quite mature for such a young keeper. He, he, was, he was shouting, commanding his box every time there was a, there was a corner or a set piece in and around our area. So yeah, I was, I was impressed by him. He's, um, he's definitely silenced a few people that were, were um, questioning the transfer. So we just hope he can keep up the performances. But like, um, like Dan just said, if he, if he carries on playing like that, there's no chance we're going to get him on a permanent. We're moving a bit higher up the pitch now. One man that has reappeared is Aaron Tishibola. To me, he justified why he should be playing and he should be starting against Wolves away next weekend. I mean, it's good for Tishibola that uh, Westwood and Garden were so bad. So, I mean, he can look pretty good against anybody. But I thought he was better. I thought he's definitely an upgrade on, on the two of them playing in midfield. And I think he's definitely earned his uh, place to start against Wolves next weekend. I don't see the point in changing him back out when he's had a, a reasonable game against Tottenham. I think he can do even better against the Championship midfield next week. To me, Gabby was isolated today. And I'm not, I'm not going to be too harsh on him because he was isolated up front. Do you think he did enough when he did get the ball to be able to start next week? Gabby was isolated, but I do, I do still think 
at times he, he makes safe runs where he where he knows he's not going to he's not going to get the ball i mean when we were out of possession i think he did very well he, he chased down he, har- he harassed and that's all you can ask of him but i think when, when we've got the ball he's he's kind of making runs where you know where you know he's he's not going to get the ball he's kind of like playing in in, in the shadows as i see i think he he can be a bit more dynamic and, and do a bit more from us it wasn't a terrible performance i think to be honest i don't think he's great at the moment but he does have to play because he, he can be an outlet, whereas I don't think McCormack on his own will be an outlet. He'll keep his place next week for sure. Can we judge that it was a, a sound performance by Villa and we didn't embarrass ourselves? And as Bruce has said, that it showed that if we can perform like that every week, there's going to be a good chance we can form a good run of form. It was, it was much better than, than I anticipated it would be. There's still obviously areas of the team that need strengthening, which we're going to go on to. But that game could have quite easily... Been a draw. I mean, we're saying that two nil, flat Spurs. I actually thought one nil, flat Spurs. And until Deli Ali came on and actually offered a, a bit of movement, they, they weren't gonna they weren't gonna break us down. And arguably at nil nil, we we had the best chance of the game from the set piece. I mean, we obviously had that that well known Alan Hutton set play going on today that we'd been working on the working on the training ground. Actually, seemed to work quite well. Is the most useful thing I've seen Hutton do. For, for a while, but I, I don't think we've got too much to be concerned about and I don't think there's too much you can read into us losing 2-0 to Spurs. Can we read into the fact that Galini was on the bench today, John, and that Mark Bum wasn't there or do we not read much into it because it's a cup game? I think we have to read in the fact that he's hoped, well, I hope that he's going to go with uh, Johnson and Galini. I, I think Bun's making errors that I don't want to see for. Also, he's not the future of the club. I think if we could keep Galini, I was really on Dan's side until uh, Johnson had a good game again today that I thought Galini should have been uh, given more of a chance and should have really been given a, a run of games because the, the the goals that happened in the early start of the season weren't really his fault. There were there were freak there were freak incidents. So I think he's going to have those as one and two, but he's got to have a strong choice keeper. And Villa haven't had a strong number one for a long time, and if we have Johnson and push him as our number one, he's only going to go in the summer anyway, which means Galini's on the bench again. So I think that's what he's going to go with, but I don't think he's going to suit us really long term. Mark Bunn's obviously going um, at, the end, at the end of his contract, but it, it's it's a hard one between Galini and, and Steer because they're both fairly young keepers. I think I'm not. I'm how how old Steer? Similar ages, just around about. Yeah, he's a he's a young keeper, and so is Galini. So it's it's going to be a battle to the death, so so to speak, between who's going to get the number one jersey. Um, so I think Johnson again. Don't get me wrong; he, he was really good today, but. What do we get out of it in the end? But Dan, we know your views on this, so I'm going to move further forward to look at Jordan Marvis' performance today. Wasn't his brightest 90 minutes, was it? Well, ever since Tony Zah said that we were had rejected a £25 million bid from a Chinese club, I mean, Amavi had, had an awful Christmas period, in all honesty, and he, he looks like he, he needs a rest. I mean, we did our prediction of what we thought the team would be for Spurs, and we, we weren't too far off, to be fair, but we had Sissoko in. At left back, and I think he would have done Amavi no harm to have uh, had, had a rest this this week because he he, look, he looks tired. He's come back from an injury, he's, and he's not in, in his best form. I mean, I, I know people don't think Sissoko is great, but he's a more than adequate backup in, in the championship for me. I think he just need, needed taken out the firing line. I think he, he needs a rest. Max, do you, what have you got to say to people that say sell Amavi? Because I've had a few replies down to it saying let's sell Amavi. We should have taken the twenty five million. I think it's absurd to say it, and I just think that Amavi needs a break. Let's be honest, these guys that are selling Selamavi are the ones that don't go to the games and sit at home, and when they come up on Villa come up on BBC, they suddenly think they're the first one of the first team coaches. I think it's absolutely ludicrous to Selamavi. I think he's the best left back in the league. One of, and if he gets break in the Premier League, he, Premier League, he'll be one of the best left backs in the Premier League. I mean, until he got injured last season, he was our best player, no doubt. But selling Amavi now would be stupid because who are we going to get in up to his standard? No, I agree with what's been said. I think it's just a ridiculous decision. I don't get to go as much as a lot of you guys go, but even I can see how good a quality he is when I get to go and watch him play. And yes, he needs a rest. Yes, he's made a few mistakes, but he's far and away better than anyone we could get in. And he's far and away one of the best players that we've got in this league. I don't see why we would sell him if our aim is to go up to the Premier League because he's easily Premiership quality. If we sell him and we go up, we're then only going to have to buy a, a Premiership quality left back, which we've already got. And we, we're not as if we're, we're needing the money again, so we've got to sell him. I just think it's, I, don't, I just don't know why the reason it is for selling him. It's not like we're going to need a quick 25 million to, to sell. His quality is there for all to see. 
yes, he's had a few issues, but I agree with you, mate, that the rest were doing fine. And I just think it's a ridiculous thing to try and sell him. Major talking point, which shouldn't be a talking point, is Mike Dean, Max, and in general, the punditry, which was a disgrace today. The punditry was a disgrace. that we can all agree on that. And Mike Dean as well, I don't know what he's playing at. It's ridiculous that going into a game, he was the main spotlight of a BBC feature. He loves being the centre of attention, doesn't he? He absolutely loves it. And that, that's all he is. He's not, by any means, he's not a good referee. When I mean, you look at his record, is it five out of the six, six less, uh, red cards being rescinded? Yeah. yeah that should that. be such that's a major awful. statement to the FA. And, and they, are, they are putting a wool over their eyes about it. It is ridiculous that a referee wants to be centre stage of a, of a game I mean, he must have loved it against Man U. He must, I mean, you see him like do you, that celebrity ref spade. You see him, he's walking out from the warm up, practicing his golf swing or something. It, it, it's, it's stupid. It's generally ridiculous. I mean, the one thing that, that really peed me off today is Danny Murphy and the BBC. I think personally, the BBC have had an agenda against Aston Villa since the FA Cup game against West Brom. I, I do. Danny Murphy, I, I, I tweeted it, I tweeted it, and I, and I got quite a bit of reception off it. He's one of these pundits that had. An OK career. I mean, he didn't set the world on like uh, Liverpool or Fulham or anywhere he went. And he, he's one of these that will cause controversy for attention and to keep himself relevant. He's saying all this stuff about, oh, Villa are doing this, Villa are doing that. He's, he's expecting us to go there and get rolled over because he's made comments before about the Villa saying they're not a big club, the stadium's not even that good. Um, what else? We, I mean, if he knows the game so well and he knows the team so well and how a team works, how a team gets managed... What does he put his money where his mouth is and, and become a manager? The one that stood out for me was in the first half when... We counted quite well on the break, and Alan Hudson made the overlapping run, and the, I think it was a Doma that was fouled, and there was a clear advantage where Hutton was in behind the whole back four of Spurs. Granted, he probably wouldn't have done much with it, but the referee pulled it back for no reason whatsoever. Then, I mean, I think Mike Dean has become a bit of a, a parody of himself, but on on that decision, I think to be honest, he saw that Alan Hutton had the ball and realised there was going to be no advantage to Villa whatsoever, so he. He, he, he uh, gave us the free kick, which he thought was a bit of a better option. That's what I think happened. How about punditry wise Because to me, Villa didn't get half as much credit as we should have done today. Well, like I say, Danny Murphy was going on about this this six at the back, but he was actually ignoring the fact that the wing, wingers of Doma and Bakuna, they were nullifying the Tottenham wing-backs. That's not, that's not negative. That's, that's stopping the other team from scoring. I mean, what does he want us to do? Go out all guns blazing and get tonked 5-0? I mean, that, seems said... to be, that seems to be what Danny Sorry. Murphy wanted to happen. He said halfway through it, Danny Murphy. Again, it's another thing. He said um, Tottenham were far, by far the better team today. They weren't. They didn't so do if anything. We, if we were so far the by a better team today, how come they weren't winning 3 4 nil at half time? We kept them out till like the 72nd se- minute. Well, they said that Danny, Mur- Danny Murphy went on about all this, but then at half time, the Gary Lineker and co. We're talking about that was the first time Tottenham had only had one shot in the first half of a game for exactly. however many years. So they're just contradicting honest, themselves I'll, the whole I'll way. Be honest, I muted the commentary second half. I didn't have the commentary on, I'll be honest with you. Where are we looking to strengthen? John, it seems that Henry Lansbury is going to be the deal that goes through next, all being well. Where else will Steve Bruce be looking to strengthen? Do we need more defenders, an attacker? Where would you be looking to strengthen next after if midfield has been sorted? Right back's pretty obvious. I think uh, Alan Hutton's just... Throughout the course of the season, not going to be good enough at all. I think he's got to be looked at. And I still think, long term, I think Lotus Bowler was better than Gardner or Westwood. I think a centre midfielder who's going to go forward alongside Lansbury is is definitely one we're going to look at, or should look at. Well, I think it's very harsh if you don't offer a Scottish Danny Alves a contract extension, to be fair to you. But um, no, nah, nah, I think we, we have to get a right back in on a, on a, a short-term loan. I think it'll be very harsh if we do, for some reason, get rid of Richie Delap or we don't play him next season because he's done literally nothing wrong apart from getting injured. I think we have to give him a crack because we've got a more than capable right back in him. Um, I got a lot, I'd like to see Jenkinson come in. Um, how realistic it will be with people like West Ham wanting him back, I, I doubt he'd come here. Um, but at this stage, I think playing the youth at such an important part of the season, obviously this is the last run now. This is where the playoff contenders will start to um, start to peel off from the rest. So I think we need to get someone in who's experienced, who can do a job in this league. I think we, with, with the right backs, what you mentioned, Tom Leggett, they're all right. Let's say if you're in a Newcastle situation, a few points clear, you're pretty much almost guaranteed in the top two. You can afford to chop and change in a few a few areas. But I feel we need to get in someone on loan who can who can do a job in that position. But just looking today, when I'm speaking to my dad, I feel we do need 
a striker on a on a on a short deal because like you said, we've got no height. Now we start um Sol Gisted, McCormack and a Bonhoeffer who are by no means the tallest players. Um we need someone who can just hold the ball up like Gisted did and knock it off. Like you say, Gabby, if Gabby's your best option as a, as an outlet, then you you've got problems, I think, at the at the moment. I can say I think Rhodes now the more I think about it, it does make sense because like Max says he can hold he's someone who can hold the ball up. He, he's good in the air, but he's also good good on the floor. Which Gusted wasn't. So for me now Rhodes looks a no brainer. Lansbury looks like it it's a done deal. And I don't I'm not sure how long Mika Richards is out for, but if we get a couple of midfielders in, Bakuna's more than capable at right back. And if Hutton's not gonna be here next season, like it looks like he, he isn't gonna be, there's not much not much point in playing him now because he'll he'll make errors still. Like you're saying about putting it's not a good time to put a youth player in, and I, I kind of agree with that, but he's not gonna make the basic fundamental errors that Alan Hutton makes, even as a youth player in my eyes. Moving on, though, to another situation at Villa in the striking department. One that I didn't expect to be talking about is Russian Hepburn Murphy's contract saga. I'm going to start with you, Dan, on this one. What is going on there? Somebody, to me, is in his ear saying, you can get a lot more money if you go elsewhere. That's that's as clear as it seems to me. It's just another one of those young players. I mean, he might be a good kid. I've heard bits and pieces about him, but it sounds like, from, from people I talk to, who seem a bit in the know. It seems that Hebber Murphy's got some, some, too much family getting involved. There's too many people in his ear. I mean, he's, he's a Villa fan, so if he's been promised football if he signs a contract. He's obviously been he's been made a good financial offer by the sounds of things. It, it's people in people in these play, young players' ears. I mean, you look at Berahina at West Brom. He he was a good player. He was scoring goals. West Brom being linked with all kinds of big moves. But now he he, he doesn't play. He's supposedly overweight, and I mean, he doesn't look overweight to me. He hasn't, he's had two or three years now completely wasted at West Brom because of these bad decisions off the pitch, and Hepburn Murphy's going to go the same way if he's not careful. I think if he'd have been up for signing a contract, he'd have been in the team today. He's, he's proved nothing to be able to turn around and sort of say, well, I'm not doing anything until I've got this contract signed. I think, I think it's outrageous that he's trying to do something like that. If he was a Villa fan, he'd sign the contract. Like, you're, that's like me coming through the academy... I, being a boyhood Villa fan and saying, no, tell you what, I'm going to go over to the Rangers, play League One, League Two standard football, you know what I mean? And, and, and get a bit of extra cash in my pocket. I mean, let's be honest, I think it's it's disgusting, to be fair. Like like John said, someone someone at that age is holding us to ransom a year below me. But I do think it's it's bad on the Villa part. We've let this one slip through the net. Obviously, they knew it was going to happen from the beginning of the year. They knew when his contract was up, they should have done it before maybe at the start of the season. If he's got somebody in his ear, you're going to be easily influenced by it, to me. I know that I would be if somebody was in my ear. It's it's quite easy to influence somebody that's got a young mindset that's not actually played much football yet. He's not even played 90 minutes in a full professional senior game yet. So, to me, somebody's in his ear, 100%, that's saying to him about money. I also can't see what, what he's trying to gain from it. He's, he's coming across as some sort of contract rebel this early in his career. I mean, mm. surely that's only going to sort of put other clubs off him. I mean, what sort yeah. of club's going to want to go for someone who's not done anything, who's then sort of trying to hold, be annoying on his contract signings? Well, that's going to stay with him. I totally agree. That's, that's going to stay with him after he's created this it's mark his card. If he'd have signed the contract, he would have had minutes... By now, absolutely no no doubt in my mind, he, he would have had game time. And he came on against Newcastle under Di Matteo and he had a, a brief stint on the pitch and he looked good. But if he's, because he's not committed, that's the reason he isn't getting football at the moment. I mean, obviously, Steve Bruce is, seems a bit obsessed with the, the Gabby Renaissance. If Hepburn Murphy had signed a contract, I'm, I'm not 100% convinced that the Gabby Renaissance would have happened because I think Hepburn Murphy is ready, but he's... He's his own worst enemy at the moment because if he doesn't sign, he's, he's not going to play and that's the reason why he hasn't been playing. To me, as a footballer, you suck it up and get on with it in the sense that you might get game time, you might not. Either way, don't sulk about it, get on with it and then you get somewhere through your own determination. Like Andres Weiman, he wasn't the greatest player as a youth team player. He wasn't scoring goals when he went on loan but he had a determination that as we've touched on Nathan Dolphonso didn't. And there's examples of it through through the history of, of Villa where it's happened over re- over recent years. Hepburn Murphy's going to go the same way. If you're a Villa fan and you're offered 15 grand to play at Villa and 20 grand to play at Rangers in a, in a terrible league, you, you, you're going to make enough money in your career anyway. You take, you take the Villa off. I'm sure Grealish could go elsewhere and get paid more, but he doesn't. He, want, he wants to play for Villa. Hepburn Murphy should be the same if, if he is a Villa fan. If you're a Villa fan, you'd, you know what I mean? you'd sign it. I'll, I'll play for Villa, you know what I mean? For, for a six pack of like, Twix or something a week. <laughs> Gen- genuinely, I would. And I, I'm yeah. sure I would, the yeah. three of you would as well. Yeah. 
I mean, we saw when we, we played at Villa Park how much it meant to us, and we were just playing half an hour game to help the Villa out, and literally. So if you could play 90 minutes at 15 grand, I, I'd jump at that. I mean, my dad's sitting in front of me. I'd tell my dad to do that. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, I would. And that's, this is the whole thing, though, that Rushnet and Murphy, we don't know if he's a Villa fan or not, but either way, he's been at Villa since he's been six years old. He, he owes the club a certain degree to sign that deal as well. And he needs to show a level of commitment to the club. And I think that's the main talking point that's going to be going forward for a while now. We'll hopefully see it concluded very, fairly soon, though, because we shouldn't be bossed around by an 18, 19-year-old. I can't think of how old he is. But either way, we shouldn't be bossed around by somebody that young. It just shouldn't happen. It's time of the times, though, unfortunately, isn't it? It yeah. is, yeah. So I think that is everything that we needed to cover today. Thanks to John and Max for joining us today. Welcome. And of course, Dan Bardell. Thank you, Matthew. So if you have enjoyed this video, then please drop us a like below and also comment your thoughts on the Russian Hepburn Murphy situation. Should he be signing that deal or would you rather just get rid of him now because he clearly doesn't want to sign that deal at this moment in time unless we pay him more money or whatever else? Let us know in the comments section. And also subscribe with those post notifications on for more content. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.